I yeah. recorded everybody else's. Yes, so. that's fine. Yep. <clears throat> so away you go, Frank. I got to do a PowerPoint. I have to put my PowerPoint up here. How do I? Okay, so. You're going to do a share screen. Okay. So. So how do I, I'm not sure, where do I go next now? Um, well, then you, uh, I don't see that you're sharing your screen yet because I don't see that at am all. I supposed to, am I supposed to, where is it? I thought you were supposed to share the screen with me. I haven't got your PowerPoint or anything. No, you're going to look for the share screen button either at the bottom. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, I see. Okay. And then you're going to choose what you want us to see and you're good to go. All right. Okay. I've never done this before. Okay. So I want, so now I got to find my PowerPoint. There, can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay, there is, this is about me. Uh, there's how you pronounce my name, how you spell it, how you pronounce it, how I wish it was spelled. So I'm a geologist and prospector for the last uh, 40 some years or so. So I've been in the bush lots, uh, mostly Ontario, but out in the Yukon and BC and Quebec and Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And I've seen lots of different rocks. And when you're in the rocks, you see different trees and animals and all kinds of different things. And that's an interesting tree that was bent over by the snow. Um, when a few years ago when I was up in the bush near Long Lac, uh, east of Thunder Bay. Of course, there's always lots of black flies and mosquitoes, but you get used to them by either using a bug net or or bug spray. Although I try to use bug spray, I use the net most of the time. I'm good at organizing things. And uh, when I was uh, uh, working up in Long Lac in, in 76, I, uh, oh no, not 2016, I organized a, a concert for uh, Todd Connors, which is Todd, Stump and Tom's son. And I did that while I was working, uh, working full time up in Long Lac. And, or just over the phone and internet and friends helping me. So some of my different passions are, I like prospecting, I like sharing prospecting tips. You're not prospectors or geologists, but those are some of the things I like to share with other geologists. And I gave a little talk with that in March. Uh, Beaver is like putting rocks on dams and sometimes they can tell you what type of rocks there, there are in the area. And those, those are lady slippers. You wouldn't think it, but lady slippers are actually a prospecting tip. Um, up and near Lewiskard, this uh, geologist for the, the Ontario survey, he found thousands of lady slippers over top of a kimberlite, which you, kimberlites are a host rock for diamonds. So unless you, once you know little things like that, if you come across something unusual, even like flowers, all of a sudden, then there's a reason for it. And this would have to be kimberlites. There's another prospecting tip uh, looking over under under overgrown blown trees for outcrop and to see you might find some interesting things. Um, I know you have prospectors, but that's, so that's one of my passions is prospecting tips. I, I'm looking for gold. I've been down to the prospectors convention a couple of years ago, and uh, they they had a bar of gold that people could hold, and it was probably at least twenty pounds or maybe more. So it was probably almost worth about a, a million dollars worth of, of gold people could come and hold and have their picture taken with. I, I, I tried to take it, but the two, the two security guards there nabbed me. I didn't get very far, just kidding. One of my, my interests is I like making uh, short films. I, want, I made about 15, 20 short films over the past you know, 15 years or so. I've won a couple awards at Cinefest uh, about over 10 years ago. I also like screenwriting and um, I finished a screenplay about two lads from Quebec and they meet uh, a press prospector, of course, and a geologist, and they say right about what you know. So I've got a, I finished that finally because of COVID last year. Now I've got to refine it, make it better, which I've got some, I'm taking some online courses on how to do that. So I, I think I'm pr pretty good shape there. I also have an appreciation for creative minds like and the creative processes. Like all, all you, all you people are more artists and other things. So you, you more of a you're more creative with your hands and, and tactile things that you do in person. But I like people who do those things. And then on the left, that's a horse made out of driftwood. And on the right is the stained glass, or my right, stained glass of Leonard Nimoy. 
by a friend who, of mine who does stained glass portraits. Uh, my short and long-term goals are to finish my screenplay and polish it up. Just find someone else who likes filming and maybe make a small minute, one minute commercial and a few other little things I have. You know, they say start small. Judy and Linda keep think, talk about starting small. So I want to make a little one minute commercial and then and then maybe someday make a, some larger films. And if I've made some short films out, 10 minutes long, who knows, maybe I could do a longer film. I'd like to do a reenactment of of uh, some Herman cartoons. I'll, and I've, I sent you some examples before of uh, artists and there's all kinds of themes. I'll give you a few more examples. And there's a caveman theme. And I, was, I envisioned this with three different spotlights on a stage or, and then one spotlight, you know, going on each, uh, on each theme and then going to another theme and then back and forth. So you change around and there's all kinds of themes. There's caveman themes, there's uh, courtroom, courtroom themes and lawyers. Uh, Herman liked to pick on just about everybody in society. Uh, musicians, he doesn't forget musicians. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's something in, would be something in this little three stage uh, endeavor that would be something almost for everybody I would think. Uh, dating relationships, there's always, you know, dating relationships. We've all been there dating or had relationships. And I think some of these cartoons would be pretty funny and uh, just reenactment with, with, with people. They didn't have to be professional actors, even good actors. And of course, dating and marriage and or being in a hospital is also another one of those themes that I think would be uh, quite humorous, quite funny. And uh, there's library theme, typical New Yorkers shut up. And then you you, and then you can customize it so by making it more localized to the area you live in. So, uh, and I've done this here, an example: Sudbury Town Planners on Strike. Well, you, you custom, I've customized that. And on the right hand, that's one's for Linda, both financial planners. <laughs> uh, he was my final, I sent it to my financial planner, and he got a kick out of it. I think he did anyway. <laughs> There's more, like I say, there's more, there's, there's about, I probably got a thousand or 2000 cartoons from all of the 10 books I've got. There's all kinds of themes on dating that are, I think would be funny. There's, uh, there's you've got themes on, on optometrists and dentists and, and pharmacists and everything, stockades. I might even send this cartoon here to our mayor or one of our MPs. Uh, and that's, that's sort of about me. So my creative mind is just sort of using other things I know about or, or things I see and then and making and, and modifying them to, to, uh, to suit a good purpose. So that's about me. And if, there, if, if we can, I'll show a, a two minute short video I made if I can hook that up, Linda. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So I'll close this. Uh, now, how do I get, how do I, how do I close my PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, use your X, X at the top. Okay, oh, I stopped sharing. Well, now you do a new share. Okay, so I do, okay, so <clears throat> I got you. Okay, so I do a new share. Okay, so there we go, now. Hmm. I'm not sure how I'm going to get to my, hang on. Can you see that? Yep.
Oh, it did have music then, Frank. Yep. Okay, because we, I guess the, you didn't share the sound. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's okay. I wish I would have known. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So you can do stop sharing. And Amanda, I should let you, um, I should let you also uh, become uh, a co-host so you can do your piece, right? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You're good to go. I think, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Sorry, everyone. This is the first time I've screen shared, so it's, it's just, a, um... That's okay, you guys are all learning. <laughs> it's asking me to. Uh... Oh my gosh. Um, I should probably go next week because it's, asking me to quit <laughs> to rejoin and stuff and I feel like this will waste time oh if that's okay or I can go another week just because it's it's uh I, okay it's doing like a privacy setting thing <laughs> okay no problem yeah we'll I let apologize you that's okay we'll let you figure that out and go go next week or whenever it works okay 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 and here's Marilyn great it, if uh, um if a man can go this week I can go kind of like like I have a shorter one Okay. And it was kind of directed at Dina too, because she works at a, she works like, um, like a dis representing disability and deaf talent, right? Okay. Yeah. I read the bio correctly, but if we don't have enough time, like I can go next week as well. Uh, well, we have, we seem to have taken a bit more time than we maybe should. And I don't want you to miss out on learning about how to find money. So yeah. I think this was like the important one to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think we'll turn it over to Dinah and uh, go from there. Okay, um, let me get my presentation set up and then I'll do a little introduction. This one here. Okay. Um, all right. So tonight um, I'll be presenting on uh, uh, grant writing 101. I know there's probably people here who have um, prepared grant applications before and then probably people who haven't done it at all. So we'll start with the basics because um, I've written many of them, but it's always good to hear from other people <laughs> who, who are also, um, you know, applying for money because you always get tips from somebody else as well. So I hope you'll all find it valuable no matter what experience you're bringing tonight. Um, if you have um, the opportunity, um, if you could open another browser window and go to slido.com, you can also use your phone or another device if that's easier for you, because we're going to have two interactive um, activities. So um, yeah, I'll give you a moment to, to pull out another device or open a browser window, and then you go um, to www.slido.com. And when you get there, it will ask you to enter a code and you enter art grants. Let me make sure. Does it all have to be uh, uppercase like yours? I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> Well, it got me somewhere. Yep. Okay, so you'll get to a blank screen. And at the top, you'll see Grant Writing 101 SAC. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's blank. Um, and in a few minutes, when I activate one of the activities, you'll, you'll see um, the, a question will pop up on there. So um, once you've got that set up, you can come back here and we'll get started. Oh, my chair's squeaky. Okay. All 
All right, so welcome everybody, or thank you for welcoming me. It says we have to enter a code. Yes, so your code will be Art Grants, A-R-T-G-R-A-N-T-S. Did you get that? Quick question, um, are the slides gonna be provided to us uh, in a folder for afterwards or have they already and I missed it? Yeah, I sent it out to all of you, but uh, um, I will be putting them in the, uh, in the um, folders as well. Okay. So if you look at your email that I sent uh, yesterday, I think mm -hmm. it's there. Oh, really? I think I just saw uh, Dina's info but nothing else. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll resend then, but I did send. Awesome. Okay. All right, so thank you for, for welcoming me into your group. I, I took a similar course back in the fall where I had to do my business canvas and do my market research too. So I know it's a lot of work and you're trying to fit it in around the rest of your life um, right now, but it's really, really helpful. Um, I'm uh, recently self-employed. I moved into self-employment um, in the fall of 2020. And, um, but before that, I was working for many years um, at Northern Initiative for Social Action. For 13 years, I was the editor of um, the magazine, Open Minds Quarterly. And uh, my background, my, originally I was uh, pursuing a, a publishing career and that's how I ended up there. Um, and it was such a great experience. Um, and while I was there, I also got to, to work on um, arts projects, uh, community arts projects. I've also volunteered um, over the years with Wordstock Literary Festival in Sudbury. Um, I sat on the board um, and was the, uh, the chair of the board for a wow. while. Right now I'm, I'm working with Wordstock on an accessibility, uh, multi-year accessibility plan. Um, um, while I was at NISA, I was also the executive director, so I also have some experience in the administration of grants and, um, you know, in, in making sure programs are delivered and, and administered as well. And so it was a really great experience because um, I've written the grants, you know, and then I had to administer them and make sure the reporting um, was taken care of. But I've also sat as a jury member. Um, most of the time at the Ontario Arts Council um, for different funds um, as assessing the applications that came in. And that was um, such a great experience because I got to read, you know, hundreds of applications and see which ones were good and, you know, what to do and what not to do. So, you know, a lot of what I learned um, you know, came out of that experience, but also just from applying for, for money year after year and finding out what, you know, what, what struck a chord with the funders and what, what really didn't. So I, I'm going to share with you tonight some, some of the things I've learned. It's something I'm doing quite a bit right now. Um, in my work, I'm, um, I'm, I, I, I support nonprofits and other people who are trying to make change in the community. And a lot of what people want is grant writing. <laughs> and uh, so this spring, I've been quite busy doing that and learning even more about it. So tonight we're going to look at funding sources where you can find money. Um, and then the actual, you know, uh, we'll get into uh, grants and grant writing how you can begin, what kinds of information you need to have at hand, um, how, how you can make your case and how you can really show you have, um, you can address a need in the community and that the funders are really gonna help you solve that problem as well. And then we're going to look to it. When you're successful, you know, what can you do? Um, because there's some responsibilities that come with that. Um, we'll have questions throughout. But at the end, there will also be another um, short period for questions. And I understand we do have a break. Will it still be at 7.50, Linda? Uh, probably, yeah, maybe, well, maybe we'll go with 7.55. Okay, I will, um, I will uh, try and keep my phone on here. Feel free to stop me and remind me if okay. we're getting close to it. 
Will do. Okay. Thanks. And then we'll we'll do a little bit of reflection at the end about what you can do next to make you know start getting yourself ready to start applying for grants. Okay. So um, there's a variety of sources of funds um, for you, for artists, for for people who are working either in um, as individuals or maybe you're in an artist collective. Um, perhaps you're working at an organization um, and you want to um, start bringing in different revenue streams, even as a, a solo um, business owner. You don't want to rely on just one stream of revenue because if something um, unexpected happens, like say a pandemic, you need to, you know, and that shuts down one of your revenue streams, you want to have, you know, other ways of, of supporting yourself. Um, so it, it's, um, you know, you can, you can start looking for other um, revenue sources and some of them are through donations and fundraising. Um, now donors, um, if you've got, if you've got something that people really believe in, they're very happy to donate their money. They're happy to donate their time. Sometimes they're donating goods or services in kind. Um, we have a, um, um, very generous community here in Sudbury, and um, there are, there are lots of donors out there, and they each have their own, you know, pet cause that they like to support. Um, fundraising, you can also um, fundraise, um, especially if you're if you're an artist um or representing an organization a nonprofit organization fundraising is a great way to do it it does take a lot of effort <laughs> depending on what you choose to do um, and this is often where you'll be holding an activity or an event to raise money um, the thing with donors and fundraising some people do like to contribute to these because they get a charitable tax receipt so if in the future you're thinking ahead, you know, I'm, you know, what I am doing um, is uh, in, in my, you know, our collective right now, our arts collective, maybe in the future, you want to move towards formalizing and incorporating, you know, getting some our charitable status so that we can really start relying on fundraising a lot more. Um, but I know some of you are, are working as individuals, so that may not be part of your plan. But um, there are examples of fundraising that you can do um, that end up being very, you know, help raising, that will help raise your profile as well. Um, we have a great local example, um, Granny Bird or Laura Lee Gallard, she, she does paint nights um, in support of nonprofits here in town. And um, not only is she able to work as an artist, in, in carrying out these fundraisers, she's able to support a good cause, but then it raises her profile as well in the community, right? And she meets a lot of people. So she's a great person you can connect with if, you, if you're if you thinking along those lines as an individual artist too. Um, sponsorships, um, if, um, as Frank was mentioning, he, you know, he held a, a, a special event in his presentation, we saw Talk Connors, came um you probably went out and found sponsors for that event or if you're running a festival um you may want to um to look for sponsorship dollars and in this case a business may want to sponsor your event in exchange for recognition so the difference between the donations and sponsorships in this case is a donor may want to donate to your event um, but they get nothing in return. Um, if they sponsor it, um, they'll get some recognition. Usually that you'll see their logos in a program or they're mentioned, or maybe they have a speaking opportunity to welcome the guests to your event. There's a lot of different benefits um, to sponsorship and it can lead to some really great partnerships between business and the arts as well. Um, if you look at any theater program or festival program, you're going to see a list of sponsors. Um, and uh, again, even here in Sudbury, there's there are 
a, quite a number of businesses who, who are very good sponsors. And we have a very loyal sponsor of the arts right here in the room tonight. Uh, Linda has been such a great sponsor of uh, arts events. Um, foundations, you can look for, for funds from foundations. Now there's different types of foundations. Um, there are corporate foundations, for instance, um, through the banks, they'll often have cor corporate foundations set up like uh, TD Canada Trust, um, RBC. There's a lot of competition for those dollars, but their foundations do have some money to support um, arts events and arts programs. Um, there are also private foundations that are often run by families um, and they will donate money to various causes and it's really up to them what they would like to to support. Um, of course, they get, you know, uh, tax benefits for doing this, um, but they're also, there's a lot of them in Canada and, and I hadn't really realized until I got access <laughs> recently to um, a foundation's database. Um, and you see just how many are out there giving lots of money out to uh, good causes around Canada. Now, a lot of those directories are behind a paywall. So they're, the information is sometimes hard to access, but there are ways of, of finding out who the, who's running the foundations and if there are any locally, or if there's some that have a specific interest in what you do. And there are a number of them that have an interest in supporting the arts. And then finally, granting bodies. Um, a grant is um, like a, well, no, it, it could be like a donation. A grant is a, a financial gift that's made for a very specific purpose. Um, often funds are granted to nonprofits, but also they go to volunteer groups or collectives. Um, individual artists as well, um, researchers, um, agencies, and you're going to find a lot of them uh, in at the government level. So you'll find them at the municipal level, provincial, federal. So for example, um, here in Sudbury, the municipal government of the city of Greater Sudbury each year um, opens up applications for its um, arts and culture fund. And it's been February, a February date the last few years. Um, and you can apply as an artist um, to, for money towards your work, um, whatever that might be. Um, the Ontario Arts Council at the provincial level has a lot of different funds as well. And so does um, at, the, at the federal level, um, the Canada Council. Um, there's also different ministries that have funds available for specific projects. So if you're an artist, um, you'll want to start making sure you have your, your uh, professional resume uh, prepared, your, your CV, and start tracking you know, the shows you've done, uh, the, the, the uh, projects you've worked on, because for these types of, of funds uh, specific to artists and arts arts uh, projects, you're going to, you'll, they go to people who are considered professional artists. So people who are recognized by their peers as, as artists. We can talk a bit, bit about, more about that as we go. So are there any questions at this point? Okay, hearing none, we'll keep going. All right, I've covered, this uh, next slide already. Um, under foundation, yes, there's also community foundations where um, donors um, come together. The community foundation will help administer um, small grants, usually sometimes large, for quite a number of donors. So here in Sudbury, we have the Sudbury Community Foundation and each year, they um, they ask for ideas of the projects that that um, uh, people here in town. I think it's I think it's limited to nonprofits. 
um, that they would like to do. And there's a, a process that's followed and then money is given out. So, uh, fairly small pockets of money are given out to different um, organizations who want to carry out a project. Now, when I say organizations, I don't want you to feel as an individual artist that you're locked out of these because you can partner. You can partner with organizations to carry out an arts project. So, um, so yeah, it, it, if, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can access funds and sometimes it's going to be for you as a, an individual artist. For instance, if you're a visual artist, you may want to apply to the Ontario Arts Council for the same project materials, or maybe you want to carry out a project and you need, you know, you just need three months to work on this and, and you need, you need some, some, you know, money to cover your expenses while you do that, there's a fund for you. Um, but you can also access other, other funds by partnering up either with other artists on a project or with um, community organizations. Um, and you can apply for money together. So um, there's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of creative ways that you can support yourself as an artist um, through grants. And it, it may mean sometimes you're working on your own, but sometimes you're working in partnership with others. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of this. Um, one thing um, as artists you should know about is that um, most of the funds through say Ontario Arts Council, the even the City of Sudbury's Arts Grants and Canada Council, you really need to look at that definition of what a they consider a professional artist to be. <clears throat> For example, um, the City of Greater Sudbury's fund, their definition is a professional artist refers to someone who has completed basic training in their artistic discipline or field, either through formal study or by teaching themselves. They are recognized as, prof as a professional practice practicing artist by their peers. They have a history of public presentation or public publication of their work, and they spend a significant amount of time practicing their art. You know, so it's, you'll, you'll need to have a way of showing that you've been participating as an artist in your community and that um, you've, you've followed some sort of training, you're serious about this. <laughs> and you spend a significant amount of time. So start thinking right now, like in your head, okay, what would I pull together in my portfolio? Do Have I documented my artwork? Have I taken photos of it? Or like we saw Frank's video, that's a perfect example, right? You have that in your, your portfolio. Um, and, uh, you know, the number of times you've shown at, at Cinefest, these are all important details you'll need to show that you're a professional artist, okay? All right, so let's get into grants and grant writing. So how do you know you're ready to, to begin um, applying for grants? Um, this needs to be a strategy for you. Um, you know, what are your long-term goals? Uh, when you apply for money, it's going to be months before you find out if you got it. And when you do get it, you're, you'll have to carry out the project. So there's you know, you have to be in a position where you can do some planning and, and um, you need to be able to know what resources you need. You need somebody else to work with you. Um, maybe you need some materials to carry out your project. You know what, maybe you need time and you need to not work for a few months so that you can, you can carry out this art project. You really need to start thinking about, okay, you know, what, what, what resources do I need to, to be successful? There's a lot of strategy and planning involved. Um, are you set up to apply for funding? You know, how, do you have um, all the documents you might need? Do you know, you know what the funders are asking for? Do you know where to look? And then if you get the money, do you have the capacity to manage it? You'll have to do some, some um, if, if you're doing your own bookkeeping, you know, will, will you know how to record it? Um, do you, will you have to get some advice on that? You know, there's, there's a number of components that come with it, but don't worry about that just yet. 
Um, because here's a handy list of things you can start to pull together. Um, you may be asked to supply financial information. Um, this is more for um, projects, I'd say. So if you have a film project, um, do you have a budget? Do you have an idea of what your budget will be? Um, if you're a nonprofit, you'll be asked to supply your board of directors list and your incorporation. Often when you're registering, a copy of your incorporation papers. Um, if you're running a specific program or project, you'll need some basic information about it. And, you know, you may have to pull out a, your, your resume. You may have to supply some biographies about the people involved in your project. So maybe you want to write your own biography um, to, to get started. Um, if you have an organization, you know, they'll be asking for your history, um, your mission, your vision, who you've partnered with, whether you have a business plan or strategic plan. Um, so, you know, the official documents, is there a way you can pull them all together? So really right now it's thinking about, okay, you know, I, I'd like to start bringing in new revenue through grants next year. What can I do right now? Who can I reach out to? If I'm doing, um, if I really wanted to direct a film, like do I have to find a producer? Do I, um, if I'd like to hold, um, to really, if I'd like to work in the community and share, um, you know, teach people this um, form of art that I'm working on, who would be interested in that? You know, can I build some relationships right now? Um, is there um, research I can do right now to find out if there's a need? And we'll go through some, some examples of this in a little bit. And then who in the community has been funded for projects like this before? You can go through, um, because um, so many grants are given out by government, it means they have to release the information about who they gave the money to, right? So you can go to the Ontario Arts Council website and find out who got the awards. Let's say you're interested in the Northern Arts Project. The deadline's coming up at the end of April. And you're like, okay, well, who, who else has, has received this award here in Sudbury? Um, or did anybody else do a project like mine? Is, is what I'm doing uh, different and unique? Who did they work with? Like, what did they learn? Can I talk to them? You know, what did, where did they find funding? So, you know, you can do some research. Um, I'm not sure the city of Greater Sudbury has it yet, but more and more governments are are um, doing an they have like an open data policy, and so even with the Toronto Arts Council, you can go and download everybody who won a grant for the last you know ten years, and you can go through the listings and find out, you know, who got money. And if there's somebody you know, like if you see some, one of your peers, if you're working in visual arts and somebody you know comes up on, on one of these lists, you're like, oh, they got $5,000 to do this project, well, call them up, find out what they did, you know, ask them if you can see the grant application that, that got them the money, um, you know, because you're, you're, you'll learn a lot by talking to people here in town. And then you might have a project that, that there isn't a fund for just yet, but you want to, you know, start collecting the, collecting the ideas, start doing the work. There's um, somebody um, I met um, at an organization here in town that's been very successful in getting, you know, lots of money <laughs> over the years um, to build their organization. And what they do is they actually have their, their ideas, their budgets, their projects, sitting in binders, ready to go. So when a ministry um, says, hey, we've got this fund right now, they can pull it out and they don't have to do all that work within you know, two weeks. They can, <laughs> they can go, they have the basic information ready to go. So it's really about planning and strategy. Um, I'm working with a situation um, a number of folks find themselves in 
is um, something I've been working with a couple of my clients with right now. Um, a lot of the grants are project based. There aren't, there isn't a lot of money for operations, general operations. So, um, you know, at some point people are like, okay, enough with the projects. I just need money to, you know, I rent a photocopier. I need, I need to pay rent, you know? And, that, and so um, that's one of the drawbacks of, of pursuing this revenue source that is often project-based and it's very hard to get the operational money if possible, but it's, it's hard. Um, but you have to build up your reputation too. Okay, and it's again, it's, you know, you have a great idea, but you're gonna have to use some strategic thinking to think to find the right grant and the right funder for your project. And you, you can't be everything to everyone. You really wanna stay focused on what you're doing. So, you know, go back to your business canvas and say, you know, what, who is it that I'm serving? Um, what is my purpose? Um, you don't want to get money for a project that you really don't, you know, feel passionate about because then it becomes a chore. Um, you want to, um, you know, be excited about carrying out the, your project. So yeah, so I mean, we're going to go through the nuts and bolts of grant writing a little bit later, but success is 20% skills and 80% strategy. So it's, it's about really knowing what you want in the long term. All right, so um, in the email Linda sent, was, was there the list of the grants and links to? No, I'm gonna send that to them after. Okay, so what you're going to get is a, um, a list um it's not a, a comprehensive list but it'll get you started and within it i've shared some links um where you can go at the municipal level provincial level federal level where you can start looking for um for grant funding okay um so um it, i really encourage you to start if you haven't done it yet to really start poking into these websites and looking through the eligibility guidelines. Um, for instance, on the Ontario Arts Council website, um, I know right now in April, did it pass? There's the artists and communities and schools um, deadline. So if you are an artist and you're working with a community organization or a school, you could apply for money. That, that um, fund opens up twice a year. So it's this month and probably October. And then the Northern Arts Grant, um, which are for artists of all, all um, areas um, to, for, for projects in Northern Ontario. There's also Disability Arts Grants. If, you're, um, if you have a project that's related to either you're an artist with disabilities or you have a project working with artists, who have, uh, with people who have disabilities. But before you apply for anything, you'll need to look at to see if you're eligible. All of them have, because a grant is given for a specific purpose, there will be eligibility guidelines. And you really have to, to um, go through them with a fine tooth comb and a highlighter and, um, and, and make sure that you're eligible. You don't wanna go to, through all this work that's coming up, <laughs> as you'll see, um, to find out you're not eligible in the end. Um, capacity, do you have the capacity to prepare a grant application? Um, do you have the time available to actually write it and submit it by the deadline? Um, do you have time to manage the project if, if you're successful? Um, Brigitte's here um, and uh, one of the grants I was successful at when I was at NISA was applying for the Older Adult Peer Support Program and we got a large amount of money um, to, to run that program for three years, but the reporting is, is because it's from Health Canada, it's, it, the reporting is really um, uh, heavy <laughs> at times. And there's a lot of that you have to, you know, provide to the funder to show that you're spending their money as you said they would. 
So, you know, and the more money you apply for, the more you'll have to report back. If you're applying for $1,500 through the Municipal Arts Grant, you know, you'll have to fill out a report at the end and it's not that onerous. Um, so you have to think about these things. I might, you know, if you have a full-time job and, and you're trying to carry out these projects on the side, just start to think about, you know, how much time do I have to apply and to carry out the project and then to report back later. And then think about your track record. If you're just getting started, you might want to start with the, the City of Sudbury's Municipal Arts Grant. The small grants are up to $3,000, I think. Um, and start building your track record of successful um, projects because, you know, in a couple of years, you can start applying for the large grants or maybe you want to go um, apply for $10,000 or a $25,000 project. And each time you do it and you, be, you can show success, um, you're able to go to the next funder and say, hey, look at the great work I've done. You know, I've, I'm, I'm reputable, I can, you know, I'm responsible. <laughs> I can, and I can do these great things if you, if you only give me the money to do that. I'm trustworthy. So here's an example of something you'll find when you start researching, um, you'll find the eligibility guidelines and um, you'll also find the strategy of the funder. This is, um, I'm not sure if you have a small screen, it might be hard to see. This is the investment strategy of the Ontario Trillium Foundation. They've pivoted a little bit in the last year because they're, they're really addressing um, the, pan the pandemic impact right now, but they had, um, six key um, pillars of their investment strategy. And on this website, on their website, you could download this. They want to fund active people, connected people, green people, inspired people, promising young people and prosperous people. And so you say, well, I have this great idea for a project and it's about connecting people who are isolated. Um, and I'm going to do that through, through um, an arts workshop. Well, you can go to this strategy and say, oh yeah, under connected people, I see that um, they want to build inclusive and engaged communities. And they want pe people who are isolated to have connections in the community. So maybe my project falls under there, but oh, let's, let's look. Oh, they also want to enrich people's lives through arts, culture, and heritage under the inspired people pillar. So maybe my project goes there. And that's where you call the grants officer and you, you, you have a chat with them. That's what they're there for. And you say, hey, I have this project idea. Um, and I think it really falls in line with what you want to fund. So, you know, can you give me some advice on how to, how to pitch my, my project? And um, the, you know, the ones I've spoken to are, they're there to give out money and they're there to help and they really want people to, to do good with the money they get. Uh, we're time for our break. Okay, well, that's good because I really just wanted to talk about strategy and um, we'll, we'll get into the actual writing of an application after the break then. Great, so, uh, so if everybody's okay, we'll do a little bit smaller break because we've got uh, lots to get into. Um, so we'll come back at about uh, seven minutes after. Okay. Uh, Dino, was she gone? Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. here. Yes, I had a question. Sure. Uh, with, with regards to the Trillium Foundation, do they usually deal with nonprofit organizations or will they go with individuals as well? The Community Foundation? Yes. Um, I can look it up during the break and I'll find out. I believe it's nonprofit organizations, but I have Thank you. I have the documents right here. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you later. <laughs> and hi Stephanie, you made you made it for the break. I don't know what happened with your link initially. Linda? Yeah. I didn't realize that 
when I shared my screen, you couldn't hear the music. How do I, how would I do that? If I uh, there should be another little button uh, that says something about sound. So can I, can I try that? Oh, I see. There it is. We just, so before I click on share, it says share sound. Yeah. That's okay, it. Can, I, can I try that on the break now? Can I try my video on the break? Sure. Why not? Okay. So I'll share. So I clicked on share sound. Then I do share. Okay. And then. Can you let me know if you can hear it? Uh, no, I'm not. Well, hang on. I got to. It's not playing yet. Oh. Oops. I gotta figure out how to. No, I gotta figure out how to get it. You hear it? Yep. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. There we go. Here's where to play. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Linda. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's totally it's totally different with the uh, with the music. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, it's much uh, <laughs> it's much more. I mean, it's 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 interesting without the music, but it's much more interesting with it. Oh, yeah. It's like like eating eating eggs without salt or pepper or <laughs> spices. It's not not even the same. <laughs> no, no, it's true. True. Yeah. It would I, I appreciate you. Let me do it tonight because like next week I'll be in the bush mm -hmm. and our who knows what the internet is there. Yeah. No, no. I just thought like why why push it um this way you, you know everybody gets to uh still learn about Thank you and see your work. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh Linda. Yes. When do our business plans have to be in? 
I believe it's the 23rd of April. I will be checking uh, and then I'll let you guys know. Okay. Because it doesn't, sure. um, I think, I thought it was the 23rd, but I'll double check. Are you still looking at the uh, at the goals and objectives? Um, yes, yes, yes. I, it's just, it's tax season, right? So I'm, I'm oh, okay. swapped. So I, I haven't forgotten. Yeah. And I've been picking through everybody's uh, that have sent to me. So I just haven't uh, haven't finished yours. Okay, well, you know what? I've redone, I redid mine. Right. And uh, I can send you a copy of just the goals tonight, you know, instead, oh, okay. of, send, instead of sending you the whole thing. Yeah. I'll just send you all my goals. Okay, because I, I know I've read some, but anyways, I, I hadn't gone through the whole thing. No, it was quite intensive. Yes, first one. Thank you. So I've been trying to uh, streamline everything good. and uh, to make it more simple, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I was pretty sure with the Community Foundation that you had to be an organization. So who's all our art, artists? There's so many artists. Evelyn's an artist. Um, uh, you mean a visual artist? A yeah, visual artist. Uh, yeah, Evelyn. Uh, Jasmine. Jasmine, for sure. Uh, Ivy. Um, Stephanie. Bridget. That's right. And uh, I, Emily, is Emily? Well, I, I mean, Emily does. I think she does. Um, I mean, yes, she would be considered a visual artist, yes, but I mean, she does. The, I mean, I mean the, painting and drawing, yeah. Yeah, the weaving and the stickers. And I mean, so she, she definitely is a visual artist. Just, uh, yeah, I was thinking more along painting or something like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, we are actually quite a diverse group, though. Yeah, so you, you'll remind us tonight what you want us to send get, send you next week. I'm gonna you want like yeah. or the, by the way, a business plan like with goals and the business plan as well. Mm. I think in my case, I think I think I'm I'm this is really helpful. All these sessions are very very helpful, and but I think I'm not gonna do a business plan because I'm just gonna do uh, but I'm gonna get some goals of what I want to do, which is really yeah. helpful. Yeah, yeah. The business plan. I just wouldn't if you're writing a script. There's no business plan in writing a script, like, you know, it's, it's just- No, not it's, unless you're looking for, I mean, as Dinah said, if you're looking for funding or something like that, then they're gonna want those kind of things. Yeah, but- uh, But yeah, I mean, and, and that's basically, that was uh, what Ganesh had told us at the beginning, right? For some people, the business plan is critical. And I mean, I think it's a useful exercise, but well, if it's really not is. what you're going to, like if, if you're not gonna use it a hundred percent, you know, then you, you could use the bits and pieces that make sense for you. That's right. And depending on which branch I would go, mm -hmm. like a business plan actually would be helpful. If I went a certain avenue, it would be helpful. But I realize if I, if I don't, it may not be best for me to go down that avenue, but instead another avenue instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's 806. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm watching, but most people aren't back yet. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine most people are, well, I don't know if they're using their computer, uh, their computer clock or not. So. How's your artwork coming along, Evelyn? Um, pretty good. This yeah, what have you been working on? a little bit. I found, um, a contract job creating how-to guides oh, that's for cool. teachers. How-to guides. So I'm writing up a couple of PDFs about how to do lino printing and how to do drawing that they can, that teachers can use in the classroom. Oh, that's you, excellent. Yeah. You get paid. You get paid for that. I'm getting paid for it. Even it's even better. <laughs> well, good for you. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Thanks. Has Jasmine been doing any art? Has Jasmine done any pictures of pets lately? Yeah, I got like three new ones that I'm working on right now. Oh, yeah. Did you ever see my email? Oh, no, I didn't see it. I sent it twice. You never responded. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, but, let me uh, look for it right now. Uh, it's about a month ago I sent it. So. Oh my gosh, I totally missed it. Yeah, well, I sent two of them, I think, or one or two, and it was because you did little dogs, and, and I'll be I'll be gone next week. It's my wife's birthday, so I said, oh well. Okay, here uh, I'm trying to find it. Yeah. By the way, Frank, I liked your PowerPoint. That was that was something you had to learn how to use, right? PowerPoint. Yeah, I just learned how to use that. Yeah, that's really great. Have you have, have you used it before? Uh, I don't use PowerPoint very much. I use Google Slides more, but it's really oh. similar. Okay. Yeah. Huh, I can't see it for some reason. Well, send me send me an email at frankrasco at hotmail .com. Okay. And I'll link, and you can link up with me. All right. I yeah, I'm still figuring out, all, like getting in contact with people and all that stuff. So. It took me a week to figure out how to offer your email hotmail when I first learned it 20 years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring out the business thing right now. I figured how to get kept forgetting how to sign on anyway. We'll let we'll let oh. Dinah come back uh, and uh, finish off for you guys. Okay, I'm sending it now, so you should get it in a couple minutes. Okay. <clears throat> um all right, so we're gonna get into like the actual nuts and bolts of, of writing a grant application. But before I do that, I want to find out which words come to your mind when you think about grant writing. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna to go to your Slido browser, whether you're using your phone or the other, another tab in your browser. So for the people who joined us a little late, um, if you open another tab in your browser or you um, go to a, a phone or tablet and you can go to slido.com and when it asks you for a code, enter art grant, A-R-T-G-R-A-N-T -T, and you'll get, this question will come up on your screen. So just enter any word. If you think about grant writing, is there something that, that uh, when you, if you picture yourself sitting in front of the screen, having to fill out an application, what do you think about? How does that feel? And you can enter as many words as you want. If you see one on the screen that you like, you can copy it and it'll become bigger. <laughs> okay, we've got we've got eleven people participating. This is great. Tedious and propose a tedious proposal. Oh no. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Frustrating. Denied. Oh dear. Budget. Advertising, limited, challenging. Does anyone want to share their their own experiences writing a grant application? Time consuming. <laughs> Hello. Well, I wrote out a few applications in my uh, in my last decade. Mm -hmm. And uh, 50 hours later, the application goes out. Then you need to wait about three, four months, and then there's mm -hmm. no answer. So you're sort of getting frustrated, and you're waiting for your answer. Then the answer comes in, and it says denied. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, and and the waiting is the hard part. You don't know whether you know you have this great project, and you don't know if you you just have to be ready to go and start it. And Does anyone else I, had, a, had an experience grant writing? I wrote, I did the digital Main Street grant. Oh, how did that own, turn out? Uh, I did it for my own business and then it was successful and actually uh, fantastic. <laughs> it, oh, good. It was time consuming to go through the process, but they made it pretty easy. Yeah. It was, it was really guided. I found the applications this past year, the ones that were in response to COVID, um, they didn't put as much of a burden on the applicants as 
in, in some other, in, in normal times. Mm -hmm. They just needed to get the money out quick. So the, I actually did it twice. So once for my own company and then I helped my friend do it. And when I did it for my own company, it was pre COVID and mm -hmm. uh, that, that it was still, it was still guided well enough that it wasn't as bad as some of the other grants that I've seen. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dinah, I'd mm -hmm. like to come back though. And I'd like to say that I, I probably submitted about 20 some applications over a period of about six years. And we were successful in getting over $600,000. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, so all of you, you have an expert here at the table as well. So uh, you can make sure you got uh, Morris's email address <laughs> for afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, look anyway at all these yeah well look at look at all these words like people seem to to really feel like this is going to be difficult and tedious and time consuming um but i see some other words here too like the you know patience is needed yes um it's uh it is challenging but it is rewarding um this week um i i, I was i heard back from some clients i was working for and um, they got a, a positive response from one of the applications we put forward. So that was, it was rewarding, you know, like a, a very important project, um, doing arts workshops with um, refugees and newcomers um, is going, is very likely to move forward. So, um, you know, it, it is a lot of work, but um, once you've got a lot of your materials together, um, it does, the first few might take a really long time, but it'll get easier and easier the more you go. And, and um, as I began applying for grants, um, we weren't always successful at first, you know, and I really want to um, let you know that, you know, the failures are going to be some really great learning opportunities for you. Um, we were applying because I, I was working at a mental health organization that did art, ha had an art program. When we were applying at first to the Ontario Arts Council, we were getting denied over and over and over. And it took us a while. We kept calling back, like, can you please give us some feedback? Because we don't know what we're doing wrong. Like, there's some like real artists here. And, um, you know, finally somebody said, took the time to sit with us and said, look, you know, the language you're using isn't speaking to the people on the jury, their peers in the arts community. And you're not using the language that they're, you know, they're not responding to what you're, you're the way you describe it. And we're like, yeah, you're right. You know, like, we're so immersed in the day to day of what we're doing. We're not, you know, we weren't really pulling back and thinking about that strategy, you know. Um, and um, so one of the, you know, Think about the people who are going to be looking at your application. Are they business people? Um, I just applied for a grant from the Shell Community Foundation, and they want a budget that's very like. Uh, I'm sure Linda would would understand. You know, would, would really be comfortable with the types of budgets they expect to see, um, being in fin the financial area. Um, and that was different from the you know, the art applications we've had to put it in other places. So um, yeah, think about who's going to be sitting at the table. Is it other artists? Is it business people? Is it volunteers who are going to be helping out? Um, usually you can find out from the websites, you know, the recently the Canada Post um, Foundation website, they, in their FAQ page, they showed who was going to be reviewing the applications. And it was their board members um, who have a lot of, you know, they're pretty high up in the in the business world. So thinking about that, you know, okay, so what do we need to really, how do we describe our project so that it's attractive to these people who have a long business history in business, right? Um, and that might be a little different than if we were pitching it to a, a jury of, of, of peers. So, um, yeah, you know, and they, you know they also what? don't have a lot of time, right? One one fund I was I was helping out with, they had over two hundred applications, so we only had like fifty minutes. Like you're spending maybe thirty hours on your application, and somebody only has fifteen minutes to read it. So, <laughs> you know, it's um, 
you have to think about, okay, so how can I, you know, get my point across in a really nice quick way so that they really understand my project easily. And we'll look at a couple ways to do that. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to pick up. Let's make sure I'm getting here. All right, so the first current slide. Oh, some things. The computer's not happy with me. There we go. So Mars asked a question before the break about the Sudbury Community Foundation, whether individuals can apply to it. So I went to their um, their webpage and I looked at the uh, frequently asked questions, and the answer is no. Individuals cannot. They're looking to support charities. So can you partner with the charity? Is the question. There we go. I need 12 windows. <laughs> there we go. All right. So the, you've found a grant. Let's say you've gone to the Ontario Arts Council website. You found a fund that matches what you do. You've read through the eligibility guidelines and you said, yes, I'm going to apply to this. And um, the deadlines in, let's say, six to eight weeks. Okay, so what can you do? Uh, the first thing you need to do is set up your files. Um, you know, set up a folder on your computer and start pulling together the important documents you need. If you're an individual artist, they might be asking for your artist statement. So if you have one that you've already prepared and you know you'll want to update it. If you have a CV and you haven't added those, the, the last few shows that you did um, or projects, you'll want to add those. Do you Diana? have any? Could yes. you explain to everyone what an artist statement is? Sure. Um, so an artist statement um, says who, what you stand for as an artist. You know, it describes who you are, um, what art form you're working in, but also what you're trying to get across um, in your work. Um, I've seen some that are that are um, as an outsider to say visual arts um, that are very. Um, you know, they're, they're difficult to read. <laughs> so um, you want to think too, okay, um, I'm going to be writing my artist statement and telling them what I believe and what my philosophical stance is. Um, is my is this a jury of my peers? Um, or am I applying to a fund with like a variety of, you know, where that a variety of artists can apply to? Um, so, um, so some artists want to include, say, the like the philosophical stance that they take in producing their art or in their current work, the kinds of themes they're working through, um, who you um, have taken inspiration from over the years, where you got your schooling, things like that. Um, you know, what your vision is um, as an artist and how you're creating your work. Okay. Um, if you're working um, as part of an organization, or even if as an individual, you've had media coverage of your work, you know, pull together those news clips. Um, you also want to download the grant application questions, because it's very hard to work in some of these forms, the online forms that they have. So um, I usually like to copy and paste them into a Word document. So I, I um, don't accidentally submit something I don't want to submit yet. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, you'll, you might want to work offline. Uh, so, you know, pull out those questions so you can see them all together um, as a whole. And there's often a registration um, form. If you haven't applied to this funder before, you'll likely have to register. So do that right away because sometimes you need to find, say, your incorporation documents, or you need to find um, a piece of information. And you don't want that to be something you do in the last hour before the deadline. So make sure you're registered. And um, the, the funder will often review that in advance too, or flag anything that's missing that's crucial. Okay. Um, most grant applications, or most like, all of them are um, through online submissions these days. If you're approaching a, a foundation, you might 
it might be through email or maybe you're presenting um, to a large donor in person and you're handing them a proposal. But if you're applying for grants, it's nearly always in um, uh, an online form, which is good, but it also has drawbacks. But you no longer have to photocopy like 12 copies of your application you know, at 3.30 in the afternoon when the grant is due at four o'clock. Here we go. Um, also start pulling together the people you need in your project. Um, is there somebody who's going to be managing the project? Maybe it's you, but maybe it's somebody else. Um, they need to have some input into this. Um, does your bookkeeper, are your books set up? to um, take in the money and report it correctly back to the fund, to the funder. Maybe you wanna have a conversation with your bookkeeper um, to make sure that your accounting system is set up. Um, as you can set it up as a project in your books, um, make it really easy to report back late at the end. Um, if you're working with the community agency, do you need to you know, have a meeting with them? Is there anything you can do right now to really show that your project is well planned? Um, so as an example, um, a number of years ago, I applied when I was um, editing our magazine, Open Minds Quarterly, we applied for the Northern Arts Project Fund from the Ontario Arts Council. And one of the things we did is we put out um, a call for interest um, for writers, for a writer in residence. And so before we applied to the grant, we actually had a number of applications and we interviewed writers who might be suitable for this project and we selected one. So when we applied for the grant, we, we knew who our writer was, who was attached to the project. We weren't just going there saying, hey, you know, we'd like some money. Um, we really wanna have a writer in residence for a year. We actually had the writer identified we had her CV, we had a sample of her writing. And that really, so what we heard back um, was that that really helped clinch the, um, the, the grant for us. You know, it showed that we did all the work. Um, they could see that the person attached to the project was qualified, was a professional writer. Um, she um, had a publication history. So it wasn't just a good idea. It was a plan that just needed support. Um, if you have a board of directors, you know, let them know what your plans are. You don't want them to be surprised later that if you receive money for a project they haven't heard about. Um, if you have partners, you know, hold a meeting, have the conversation right now. Because once you submit the grant, you're going to be waiting, you know, maybe four months for a response. And uh, you're going to get busy with other things. Just you know, have all the conversations now. You're not going to be doing the planning. Um, you'll be busy doing other things. Okay, are there any questions at this point? I, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, as far as like, say you have a project that maybe based on circumstances needs to start before finding out if you receive the grant, can, is it, like, is that something you can do if you have the means, like do the project or start the project. And then if you get the funding, great. And if you don't, you don't, or is it, should it be a project that you're waiting to start with the funding? Yeah. Well, what, one of the things I've seen people do is they break up their project into phases. And so when, um, so let's say they do research and development. And then when they pitch the project to the funder, they're saying, we're looking for funding for phase two, which is um, carrying out the project. We've already done okay. phase one um, because funders won't fund retroactively. Okay. You know, so they won't, they won't give you money for some, for money you already spent for expenses that you already um, okay. incurred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you really, you know, think about how you can pitch it. Can you break your project into smaller parts? And then when you go to different funders for each of those pieces, mm -hmm. um, that might be, a, you know, a strategy you can take. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I've seen people even just request money for it to document their project after it was done. 
like wow. uh, okay. yeah um and then um they, they pitched it as something separate like hey we did this great piece but now we need to document it for some reason um and then others are saying we just want to apply for money to, for the research and development of this so you know depending on the fund you're applying for you might be able to like break up your your project mm -hmm. okay yeah. Cool. yeah thank you okay now you need to make your case so these are the typical components of an application um and I, I put them kind of in this hive shape because they're they're very much interrelated. And I'm going to present them in a particular order. Um, and that order is usually followed in the applications, but I really want you to think about how they work together. Um, because when you sit, um, when it gets in front of a jury, let's say there's five people at the table, there's you know somebody who loves to look at the budget and looks at every detail of the budget. There's somebody else at the table who's looking at your past, you know, your history. Um, and um, I was sitting on one table recently where, you know, there was one juror who's really interested in the trajectory of the artist, whether they were, you know, they, they were building on a foundation and really like, they just needed money to propel them, you know, into a different um, level. There's some people who look at the work plan very closely so this is kind of a you want to give the jury a menu of options <laughs> you don't know who's going to be there um counting the beans you don't know who's going to be there really looking into your your resume you're just gonna you're gonna present it all and try and do a good job at all of it and um and, and uh you know that that's going to be your the best way to to handle this the first section is why you um, this really asks you to describe you um, and your organization. We're going to see a sample question in a moment, but even in the registration process, you're going to see questions um, where you have a chance to tell um, the assessors about you or your organization. So um, what they're really asking is why you, why should we give you the money and not your, the, the person down the street from you? Okay, so think back when you're doing your business canvas, there's probably a section where you're thinking about your positioning, right? Like, and, and why you're, you're different. Um, so here's a typical question. It's like, tell us about your organization or tell us about you as an artist. Um, so this is where you would refer to your artist statement or your mission statement, your vision. And you're going to tell them not only about you, but why you're better than 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 the person down the street this is a competition so you know you don't want to to uh you want to come off as um as uh reliable you're going to use the funds appropriately you're going to do what you say you're going to do but you also want to you know show why you're you're the best um and why you're the best person to do this project now so um one thing i have, have you when you were talking about marketing earlier in this course did you talk a bit about the the purple cow by seth godin at all no we didn't hear about that no so um seth godin is like a marketing guru to some um he's been around for a long time and and he's got some great ideas and one of the ideas that stuck around for a long time um, is the idea of the purple cow. Um, he, he recites a story about um, how he and his family were driving through France at, at some point, and they were just enchanted by all like the, the, the farmland around them and these storybook cows that were grazing uh, on picturesque pastures. And it was just beautiful, you know, and they were marveling at how beautiful everything was. But after a while, they kept seeing these beautiful cows and they started ignoring them because they were everywhere right the new cows were just like the old cows and and no longer were they amazed and and marveling at this situation it became boring um you know so they might be perfect cows they might be attractive cows and they might be really you know great cows to be around but they became boring so but what if you saw a purple cow right 
what if there was a purple cow in the middle of this field? It would be outstanding in its field <laughs> to be punny about it. Um, you know, that would make, that would be interesting. That would be something you would want to pull over to the side of the road and look at, right? So when you're thinking about how you're going to describe yourself, think about how you stand out um, in, your, in the field. So here, we're going to compare two different statements. Our organization runs an after school art after school art programs for kids in a troubled neighborhood. Once a year, we hold an art exhibition of the work they produce. Okay, so we're looking at this statement and we see um, who it serves. It serves kids in a troubled neighborhood. Um, we're going to hold an art exhibition um, as you know to show off the work that they've done. Um, it's held after school, but let's try and make it a little bit better. Here's a revised one. We offer parents comfort and security knowing their children are in a safe place after school, taking part in skill building workshops in the arts. Oh, sorry. Led by professional artists. I'm missing a word there. Not only do children learn how to be artists, they learn how to plan an exhibition, market and promote their work, and how to hang artwork in a gallery. So here, we're not just serving the children in this program, we're serving the parents. And we're promising parents comfort and security. Their children are, in, we're, we're promising safety um, for their children. And not only are the kids going to take part in some arts program, in the, in the first example, you might think they're learning some arts and crafts, but in the second example, you see that, you know, they're, they're, they're taking skill building workshops and the, the people who are leading the workshops are professional artists. So there's a quality um, to this program. And they're going to learn specific skills like how to plan an exhibition, market and promote their work and how to hang artwork in a gallery. So um, I hope you can see the difference between these two. Um, in the second one, we can see how this program stands out from other after school programs and how it hold, it solves a problem as well for the parents who need a safe place for their kids to go. And then there's capacity building, which is a real buzzword right now. How does your program build capacity? Well, right now we can already see from this about statement that we're building capacity in the children. We're teaching them skills. Okay. So probably earlier in the course, you worked through your positioning statement. So when you're, when you're preparing this answer in the grant application, you know, you want to answer these questions. Who do you serve? What are you promising? What's the value to the people you serve? You know, what's the pain that, that you're, you're addressing? Um, what problem do you solve? And why should they believe in you? Then there's usually a question. Tell us about your project. What they're asking is, what will you do with this money? And sometimes it's as simple as describe your project. And you're like, okay. And they're like, you have 2,500 words or no more than 10 pages. And you're like, okay, I'll do that. But, <laughs> but and there isn't a lot of guidance. And sometimes it's very specific, like tell us about your, pro your project and how it aligns with our um strategic plan but sometimes it's as it's as simple as this um so you're going to think like a reporter and as you begin writing and you're going to answer the very simple questions you know who what when where and how what is your project about who does it serve when does it happen where does it take place why are you doing it and how will you do it Um, another typical question is explain why this project is needed. And this is, you know, you really have to think about it. And I hope you've done some research in advance because you want to find out what the need is. Um, so, um, in what can I, do I have a recent example? I had to find out last month 
um, whether newcomer students in Toronto um, were dropping out of school um, during the pandemic. And I had to go and find the research that showed that it is because we're pitching a project um, to um, help re-engage um, students in their ESL classes after, after ne in the next school year. Um, so I had to go out and find that. Um, so that, you know, you want to, you want to convince yourself that there is a need for your project um, and then convince the jury. Um, you want to answer the question, what need does this project address? How do you know there's a need for it? Um, has a survey been done? Um, is there something um, you can find through the Stats Canada website that supports it? What problem does it solve? And how, how do you know that, that it is a problem? Okay, and how does the solution align with the goals and priorities of the funder? That's very key. Um, so one of the applications I was working on this month, it was through, it was, um, we're applying to TD Canada Trust and they have their strategy, their investment strategy right on their website. They said, these are the four things we will fund. And um, we had to find, you know, which, which of those, those strategies our project fit in. And we had to tell them like, this is, you know, our project is, is exactly what you're looking for. And this is why. Here's a really long example, but I think it will um, show you how you can identify the problem. And when you're identifying the problem, um, you're going to make it, it, it like when, when you finally get to describing your project, the, the, the person who's reading this is gonna be like, well, of course, that's, that's going to solve the problem for sure. You know, like it's, you're, if you think back to your, uh, you know, grade 12, um, English classes when you had to write a persuasive essay. This is what this is. So in this example, um, I, I've I've made this one up. So d these numbers aren't aren't for Sudbury or anything else. I've combined a few different um, grant applications. In our city, 7,568 older adults age 70 plus are living in long-term care. Uh, 2019 report by the Seniors Advocacy Committee, which provides advice to City Council, indicated that long-term care residents are experiencing loneliness, 37%, and feel disconnected from the community, 68%. Caregivers in LTC homes are seeking ways to connect residents to programs that increase a sense of connectedness to others and improve their psychological health. Research shows that participatory arts programming can effectively address these needs. In 2012, Greer, Floriette, and Cantu supplied data proving that arts programming for fixed income older adults in a housing complex increased social engagement, sense of empowerment, and psychological health. And on it goes. Um, so within a couple of hours, like the, the references in the bottom I did pull, they are, this is research that I pulled after a few hours. Um, so usually I'll spend like two to three hours just pulling the research out because you want to provide these numbers. You want to say, yes, there's a problem and somebody like there is a solution and there's support for this solution. So what I'm going to pick the, the, the project I'm going to tell you about right now is going to solve this problem. So you, per, you offer a solution. So. Um, <coughs> This example, um, what's my next one here? Hang on here. Okay, so here's a comparison. So then you're gonna offer a solution to a problem. So here's a solution not connected to the example before. Our members told us they wanna learn how to cook healthy meals. We will offer eight sessions on food preparation to show people how to cook. I mean, that's a basic project description but we can do better. Um, so here's a way we could pitch that project differently. Um, identify need. Our members told us in a 2020 survey that they wanna learn basic cooking skills like chopping food, measuring ingredients and using kitchen tools. 
70%. Healthy eating is important and they wanna learn how to use more fruits and vegetables in their cooking. Proposed activity, we will offer eight workshops that will focus on kitchen skills. Our facilitators, a licensed dietitian and a kitchen assistant will work with participants to cook healthy meals while improving their food preparation skills and how to use kitchen items, but da 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 da. We will also review proper hand washing and safe handling of food in line with national standards. The workshops will be offered between February and May to ensure equitable access to the program. Childcare will be offered to participants whose children are not school aged. So you can see the difference between these two. This one describes the project, it's eight sessions on food preparation, but this one states the need, proposes an, act, an, acti an activity that addresses that need, and it provides the who, what, when, where, and how. And there's some, some nice details here, like there's going to be a licensed dietitian and a kitchen assistant. It's going be in line with national standards. It's going to happen between February and May. It's not just a, an idea at this point, there's a plan. So the more details you can provide, the better. Um, a couple things um, I'm noticing is that a lot of grantors are now asking for projects that are developed with the community. So if you can show that the people you're serving or your audience um, <clears throat> has some sort of say in how the project is developed, like if it's a, um, a community arts project, you know, have they asked for it? Have they told you this is what they need? We, can't, we can no longer assume that we can just deliver something to the community um, and that we have determined this is a need. They have to tell us that there's a, um, that they need something. And a lot of this is in response, of course, to the, um, to, um, you know, all the conversation right now about how many people have been left out of conversations and how many people have been left out of um, systems. So, you know, start to think about that. Um, there's often a question too about whether you're serving a diverse audience. Um, a lot of the, the a lot of the question, a lot of the applications now are saying um, we want to see projects that build capacity. They don't want to just give you money once and then have you come back next year. They want to know that you're growing and. Yeah, um, either the participants or your audience or you are developing and growing as a result of this money. They wanna see projects that are innovative as well. <clears throat> okay, are there any questions right now? Let's see what the time is like. We're getting close, eh? Really wanna get, I wanna really wanna get to the budget and work plan. Okay, work plan coming up. So when you get you have your project description, you want to support it. If you have the ability to attach a work plan, do it um, because your project description, your work plan, and your budget all work together. They really um, um, they answer all the questions before people before the jury can even ask it. You give them everything that they need. And the work plan really shows how you will carry out the project. So here's an example of a very basic work plan. Lists the months, what's going to happen in each month. That's fine. There's gonna be workshop planning, promotion of the workshop, eight week workshop, surveys, an art exhibition. <clears throat> we're gonna share it on, you know, on social media and the website and we're gonna report back to the funder and board. So it's got all the I right- a, I have a question. Yeah. Since it takes a while for you to write the grant and it takes three to four months, you said, I think, for them mm -hmm. to respond back. Should yeah. you be planning like months a year from now or half a year from now? Yeah. So I think um, I even have it in my notes coming up too. Like for instance, the there's an artists and communities and schools grant application deadline in let's say October of this year. 
And if you got that funding, you wouldn't get it and you wouldn't find out you got it until let's say four months later, November, December, January, February. So maybe you're planning a project for March, 2022, right? Um, so, so three to four, three to four months is generally, you can expect if you're gonna hear about it, you can pretty much plan yeah. half, a year, half a year in the future. And this year became complicated because all like with with online everything everybody having to do it at a distance it added some time. So here's a you know a, a work plan that's been really amped up. You know it's got it lists the objectives. It says what's going to happen to meet those objectives. Um, so in January there's going to be a lot of project planning, the preparations for the workshops. And then to meet the object, like, in, and then the workshop doesn't actually begin until September. So it's really breaking it down. Who's going to do the activities? Who's responsible for it? You know, what the activities are and when it's going to happen. And the more details you can add, the better. Because when you get the money, you just want to go. You, you like, you're, you pull back the people together and say, hey, we, we got the money. Don't you remember we said that in January, we're going to start the project planning or in September, we're running these workshops. Um, oh, there we go. And then if you really want to boost your work plan, <clears throat> you can show the resources that you need to accomplish these um, objectives. <coughs> okay, so when you get the slides, you'll see you'll see all of the, these in there as examples. You'll also be asked how you're going to measure and evaluate the project. Um, and I know as somebody who's who's worked um, on a lot of these projects, I just roll my eyes. I'm like, oh, it's just one more thing to do. You know, why can't we just do it? We just want to do the art. <laughs> but we need to be able to show if the project's successful, right? And then, we, and if it is, then then you can go back to the funder again and and apply for money again next year. You say we prove that, you know, when we do a project like this, it's successful. We want to expand it this year and grow it. So you're, you'll be answering the questions like, what are the project goals? How will you know, you know you met them? What tools are you going to use to measure this? So, you know, think about how you're going to measure success is if you're doing a performance, is it in the number of audience members that attend your showing? Is it um, a survey you've done of workshop participants to find out if they enjoyed your workshop? Um, if, um, you know, is success for you, um, you know, I don't know, 10 sales um, of your product, you need to think about how you're going to measure that success. And here are some examples you'll find in the, um, in the present, in the slides. <clears throat> Okay. And the budget. I love the budget. <laughs> Here's a very simple budget. You know, it shows the revenue and it shows the expenses. It shows the money coming in to the project and it shows the money going out. And it shows, you know, who's going to contribute what. There's a community organization that's going to provide $720 in cash. Um, they're also going to contribute. Um, uh, in kind, so they'll pr be providing either goods or services to the project with about that are valued at twenty five fifty eight. This funding request is for nine thousand two hundred sixty two dollars and two cents, and um, we expect to get uh, thirty one hundred dollars in donations. The total budget is fifteen thousand six hundred and forty dollars. And then the expenses shows how we're going to spend it. Um, we need to, we need, these are the resources that we need to complete the project. We need personnel. We need uh, money for professional fees for a videographer. We need a venue to carry out our project. We need artist fees, we need materials and supplies, and we have some administrative costs we need to cover as well. And so the revenue, total revenue and the total expenses always needs to match. Okay. So here's a, here's a better budget. 
because it adds some details. So I'm always looking away, but I have a bigger screen to my left here. So here we can see that on the revenue side, we got a little bit more details. Um, we, we can see, um, you know, who's making the donation of cash. It's actually going to be split between Jones's market and an anonymous donation. And we can see the in-kind contribution and what it actually is. And it's going to be um, personnel, venue, promotion. And then when we look at the expenses, any questions the jury has, they'll be like, what on earth are they spending $2,500 for? Um, they can go into the budget and they can see it. They say, oh, those professional fees, that's for videography. Oh, okay, and they'll get, they'll have the answer from the project in the work plan and in the project description. Oh, they're going to document this and they're going to share it on the website at the end. Okay, you know, um, so everything works together to really justify um, the request that you're making. We see that art materials, for example, it's how did we get seven hundred twenty dollars? Is because each um, box of art materials is $60 and we're expecting 12 participants. Um, you know, why, is, why are they asking for $500 in administrative costs? Oh, it's because they have some bookkeeping costs associated with this. Um, they have some communications costs associated with this. So you have to check also in your eligibility guidelines to see what, what um, what they actually allow in your budget. Um, sometimes they'll say, oh, you can't, you can't request money for overhead, um, like the administration costs, but you can request money for supplies. So you can't request money for equipment, but you can ask, you can request money for wages. And if you're an artist, a visual artist, you really, you know, you're going to look at the car fact rates um, to see, because those are the, the rates that um, the minimum recommended rates for artists. So in this example, you can see, I think this was from the 2021 rates. The artist fees for workshop development were $357 a day. Um, for workshop delivery, there are $322 and the artist fees were $230. If you're in um, theater, you'll be looking at the actor's equity rates. I think there's a, there's a specific um, uh, schedule of rates that are acceptable. I think for film too, there's one. Um, so you'll wanna go to your, your associations and get the, the recommended uh, rates for your, your art form. Cause that's going to, you, you wanna say, yeah, we're asking for this money and it's quite a bit of money for artist fees. Um, in this case, it's like nine, ten thousand, it's over ten thousand dollars. And some of you might look at that who's not an artist and say, Whoa, that's a lot of money. But you could say, actually, you know, look at this note at the bottom. It says we got these, these are the minimum recommended uh, fees for artists. Okay. And then you break down in this example, we won't get into this one, but if you're saying that um, there's an in-kind contribution, if you can show how that's how you've broken down that calculation, even better. Answer all the questions you can answer before they're even asked. Okay, are there any questions at this point? Okay, and then supporting materials, the final one. So they've looked at your program, your project description. They, they see what your request is, how you're solving a problem. You've supplied a work plan, you supplied a budget. It sounds great, but can you really do it? And that's, you know, if you have an opportunity to attach supporting material, do it. You can attach media stories. If you have a partner who's committed to this project, they can, they can write you a letter of commitment or even just a letter of support. Um, you can attach your resume or a biography. Um, if you have an organization, maybe you have an annual report or a survey that shows the need for your, for your project, testimonials, photographs, um, like if Frank was applying for something, he could attach his video. If you're an artist, you can attach um, photos of your artwork. Um, 
And so you've got all the components. And this is really like, I would love to do like a whole one day workshop on this because there's so many <laughs> little pieces and details we could cover in this. But um, the earlier you can start to prepare your grant application, the better. You know, and then when you're ready to submit, you're going to go through everything and make sure everything's correct. And don't wait until the last day. I've been in a situation far too many times where, you know, technology fails you. <laughs> submit the day before or a couple of days before um, and, and have some peace of mind. Because if there's a glitch or the system flags a problem, you need to have time to fix it really embarrassing to call the grants officer 10 minutes before the deadline and and, and to let them know that <laughs> there's a problem and you don't you only have 10 minutes to to fix it um, and when you're successful with a grant you need to recognize the funder um, you need to probably share their logo on all your promotional material you need to mention them whenever you can if you have an event you're going to say this um, you know, this event tonight is sponsored by uh, so-and-so. Um, you might want to invite your funders to your events. It's a great way to build relationships with them um, because then they know you, right? And, and they're looking out for you and forward, forwarding you information um, throughout the year when they, they see something that comes across their desk that might be of interest. They might say, hey, there's something else that might support your project. So use the, you know, build the relationships with the funder and invite them to your events. Um, you'll also be asked to supply a final report or maybe even a midterm report if it's a, if it's a long one, if it's a long project. Um, and these are legal agreements that you sign. So you do have to supply a final report at the end. So make sure you, you understand the deadline for that and what they expect, because if you need to collect some information for them for the final report throughout the project, you've you've uh, set up a system to do that okay we'll come back to questions Whoop! where did my slido go i have another slido hang on and this is about what you're going to do tomorrow okay if you go back to your slido window There should be, oh, where is it? You will see a question coming up. What is one thing you can do tomorrow to get grant ready? I'm going to share the results. Oh, here we go. There we go. Are you able to see the results coming up now? I can't tell which screen I'm sharing now. Okay. Finalize my business plan to contain most of the answers in the grant application. It's a great idea. If you have a business plan, most of your answers are probably there. You might just have to re reconfigure them. Research, yes. Is there a need in your community that you can solve with your idea? Work plan and budgets. A work plan is great um, because you are thinking ahead and um, you know, if you're identifying what you need to do in your work plan and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be thinking, okay, I actually need people for this. I need money. I need time. I need su supplies. I need equipment. <coughs> this is the work you can do right now. Refine my artist statement. Yes. Create an artist statement. Yeah. Research and artist statements. So you might want to go even to um, people in the artist community and ask them, do you have an artist uh, statement that I can see? Start collecting them from your peers, you know, um, and, and see what they look like. 
um, if, and, and ask them, have you applied for a grant and got money? Can I see your application? You know, it's, it's going to look um, different for no matter what, you know, if you're applying for money for a festival or you're applying for money for a film, it's going to look different from, from sector to sector. So, um, you know, ask people to help. There's so many, the arts community is every so great and so supportive. You're, you're gonna, you know, get the answers from, from the people you, you know, and think about who's successful, who's been, you know, who's received money to say, go write their book. Can you write, you need to write a book. Who's received money to, do a performance look in the theater pro if you next time you're in the theater <laughs> look at the theater programs and see like who's you know where they're getting their money which funds um the information's out there and um it, it takes a bit of detective work um but you can do this yeah Anyway, it was a lot to throw at you over two hours i know it's a lot and um that's why <laughs> It's 101. I would love to get into the 201 piece of it. Um, but I am available. Um, my website is dinalaprairie.com. You can always just, you know, if you have a question, send it over. Um, and I can uh, try and point you to the answer in some way. And uh, if I don't have the answer, I'll try and point you to somebody who might. Yeah. Um, so are there any questions right now? Are you feeling confident? Are you feeling scared? What's, what's happening? I had a quick question about the, um, the budget. Mm -hmm. I noticed you had, you, you, maybe there's just an a, a example for, you had a uh, few thousand dollars and 25 cents or 74 cents. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah, I would just, you wouldn't be that meticulous. It would almost be, unre that's almost unrealistic. You were just, you would just round it up in even dollars, wouldn't you? You could, you could. It depends how much uh, detail you want to show. And so sometimes I'm balancing it out like, okay, well, well, we'll estimate this one, but we need really need to show the detail of this one. If it seems like a number they're going to question, then I'll make sure the details are in there and it might be 27 cents. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you're, if you're saying it's going to be this much per hour plus HST, I'll include the exact amount because um, it does add up you know, in the end. Morris, I think you had a question. Oh, you're, you're on mute. Do you do um, grant applications on a hire? Yeah, I do, yeah. Really? All right. Mm -hmm. And all It seems work. to be, if nobody wants to do them. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, know it's I crazy. like it. I like it. I really like you the really? strategies of it. Um, and there's other people out there who really enjoy it as well. Um, and, um, you know, after a while, you're just like, well, okay, I'm going to find a way to get this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to find a way to convince them. Um, so so, I, so I'd like to get in touch with you. Maybe, Linda, you can uh, forward her. Yeah, uh, I will. Her communications. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think there's, a, I, I'm not sure who else in Sudbury is doing it, but there are other grant writers out there too. Um, you know, some people decide to outsource what they what they don't like doing. Um, other people really want to learn the process and find out, you know, what funders respond to because there's a lot well, of experimentation. Well, in my past experiences, when I've done a uh, Philium application, like I was depressed for about a week afterwards. <laughs> it took me like about a week to recompose myself and to get the juices flowing again. Yeah, because and, the really and some of the applications. Process, the trillium ones are, are pretty extensive too. And, and it's uh, it's worse when you're doing it for yourself. If you're mm -hmm. doing it for somebody else, oh, so you don't get so personal about it. But with yourself, a lot of times you, you're sort of putting in what they don't want to hear, you know, you're too, you're too close to the project. You need somebody else to pick your project and actually sell it for you. And that's a really good point, Morris, because you, you know, you might want somebody to read it to make sure it makes sense, right? Because you, you've got all these great ideas and they're swirling around, but you know, does it, does somebody else when they read it, understand your vision, you know? And that's why I really like, I like doing the work plan, even though it's not always, there isn't always a place to attach it because it really forces me to be logical and work out all the details and question, you know, is this necessary? Is this something that, oh, I'm missing a step, you know? Um, so even when we don't attach a work plan, I always really insist on it. Cool. 
because then when you get the money too you're like oh we got to do this now <laughs> so you just pull it out and you're like okay we have a plan let's let's go yeah so are you all inspired everyone's gonna gonna actually act on this tomorrow well i feel yeah. richer i feel richer tonight yeah. <laughs> That's good, I think that's you can good. do it, you know, and even if you're not successful the first couple of times you call the grants officer and you say, hey, what can I do better next time? You know, that's what they're there for. I've been involved with a nonprofit organization, but uh, to do it as an individual and independent is a different world for me at this point, you know. I can imagine. Yeah. And I know working now on my own, it's you don't always have somebody to, to bounce ideas off of, right? So it's and to yeah yeah that's it. refine the idea mm -hmm. yeah great well if anybody uh if anybody has any other questions i'm gonna say uh please contact dinah personally i'm gonna send it out uh in a couple minutes to everybody uh thanks so much i think that uh you've certainly given everybody a really good insight and hopefully inspired people uh, to do some some research and that sort of thing. I recently had a, a small group of people that have come together to do a community project. So, you know, feel free to either link up between our gang here or uh, reach out to other uh, creative people if you, uh, if you think you, uh, you know, want to start out by doing it uh, with somebody else. But thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. Those are good. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, Frank, did you, uh, uh, sorry about missing your email and I'll, and I'll keep checking for it. And uh, I'm sure we can get in contact like somehow. <laughs> and uh, Frank, next week, make sure you bring your GPS with you in the woods. Okay, have a Thanks good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good luck, Thanks, everybody. Dana. Okay, you thank you, Dinah. Hey, you, Marilyn. Thank you. Bye, -bye everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have, you, Bailey, have you done any cooking, Melanie? Are you still cooking these days? I, yes, I'm cooking, but not nothing too exciting, nothing too outrageous like uh, you would have seen on TV. No, no more heart. <laughs> Definitely not. No. Oh, yeah. Are your girls are your girls better cooked with with you now, especially the younger one? Um. You know what? They all kind of have their own thing. They all kind of have their own personality in the kitchen. So. I know the older one really helped you quite a bit. Yeah, and she she's the kind of girl who, when she's doing her own thing, she makes craft dinner at midnight and chicken <laughs> noodle soup. Like she's a little bit out there. <laughs> yeah, my wife taught me how we, we made butter tarts a couple of weeks ago. It's so easy. You just get some eggs, sugar, and some stuff, and you put them in a, in a we had a prefab, prefab crust, and I made butter tarts and they were awesome. Nice. And see, I've never tried to make butter tarts before, so I, we can all try cooking something new this week. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> or we can order from Bridget. Oh, Bridget. Well, oh, yeah, because she makes food. That's true. That's right. That's right. Great. Well, have a good week, everyone. Thanks, Linda. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rego. Bye. Uh, did, you, did you see my uh, yeah, I got message? Your, I got your stuff, Jasmine. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Sorry yeah, about I, that. No, no, I'm definitely going to be more organized. I'll check you with you uh, either tonight or tomorrow. Okay. I'm definitely going to keep checking. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. And, and I definitely learned from that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Okay. Cool. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. -bye. bye.